At the exact time of this video recording, I have over 375 blog posts on my blog, adamenfroy.com. I publish 15 to 20 new articles on my blog every month, and I publish two videos uh, on YouTube per week, soon to be three, we're expanding that. So what does this mean? Well, in the last 30 days, I got over 466,000 visitors to my blog, and I got over 139,000 views on YouTube. So what does this equate to today? Well, in Q1 of 2022, January through March, my business made over $800,000 from six revenue streams. So that's a 3.2 million dollar run rate with 70 percent margins those revenue streams are like affiliate marketing course sales sponsorships cpc deals course partnerships and all of these different things so what does this mean well i created a content business that makes me over a million dollars a year after taxes and i did it by starting it in 2019 and for just three dollars so what does this all mean well in today's video i'm going to show you exact my exact uh, seven figure content plan my content calendar for you know how i do things on my blog and youtube and exactly your framework if you're just starting out from zero how to create a content plan plan for yourself to make the most money. But before we get started, I want to invite you to watch my free masterclass. It covers my exact content, link building, and affiliate marketing strategies. So click the link in the description below, check out that free training, and let's get into the topic for today. All right, so let's dive deeper into my content strategy. So we're going to cover how I manage my content calendar, how I manage my blog writers, how I manage YouTube, and then how I do keyword research and video ideation. So let's start with the blog content. So first, all you really need to create a content calendar for your blog is a simple Google Sheet, a spreadsheet. And what I do is I do my keyword research and I add, I start adding keywords and I ideate, I think of keyword research, I do it with Ahrefs and other tools, and then I start adding and compiling my ideas. So we can see these are all articles that I actually published already on my blog. And this is where I add in a column for like the title and the target keyword. So you can even do something like this where you bold the target keyword and say, that, you know, here's one on the seven best market research tools so that was a keyword that I, uh, I came up with. We'll do this, we'll give you your exact keyword research strategy later in this video. But it's, you know, target keyword is one column. Then you have your Google Doc, so your writer can, you know, place the Google Doc there, they can do all of those things. We can have a publish date, who it's assigned to, and then any notes on, you know, uh, what you need in that post, and then it can finally be done. So you start with your keyword research, you add in your ideas, I add them in, then I have a Google Doc, so it's like this exact thing is done, seven best market research tools. What I have when I when I optimize it with my writers is you can dictate the exact rules for blog posts so that they're all optimized perfectly, like 99 in Grammarly, so then you know there's no grammar errors. 80 plus in Surfer SEO, so you know that it's optimized for SEO when you get it, and less than 1% plagiarism in Grammarly, which you know, you're gonna get a tiny bit of plagiarism just based on common sentence fragments throughout the internet. But pretty much what you see here is, this is a completed Google Doc, we see it all here. You can see like Surfer SEO looks like this. So we see, you know, the best survey software. This is a similar article. And then it has this content score. Surfer has all these different things so you can make sure that your writer or yourself has the best keywords in there and the semantic keywords. So it says like, like for example, customer feedback, I have in here 10 times, I could probably lessen that a little bit. But it tells you exactly what to do from a headings perspective, from a uh, number of images, number of words, paragraphs, and all of that. And then you get it to your finished article. So you have the article is done, it's standardized, it's formatted, it's in the same format as many other articles as you can see on my blog, like webinar software. We have all these different articles. It starts with intro, headings, structured content. So really creating a content calendar today is, I typically get like 20, 20 keywords ahead. I place this into my spreadsheet, I have a Google Doc here, and then I have a published date and I assign it. So that's really it from a content perspective right now. And we're publishing, you know, we're increasing publishing velocity, I want to hire another writer. So we're getting up to like one blog post published per day, and then creating a content manager and all of these different things. But really, it just comes with a simple spreadsheet starting and adding your keywords in having a Google Doc and then uploading that to WordPress, having your writer do that or doing that yourself. So next is YouTube. Next, we can talk about the YouTube thing. And you see the content calendar looks almost exactly the same. So you create my video titles here. And then I do research on how long the video should be when I'm going to shoot it, when it should be published, the day of the week. As you see back in like January, we were doing one video a week. Then we increased two videos a week. Now we're going to increase it to three videos a week. But we can see that these are all the video titles, how long I think I want the video to be, and then a script so I can show like a script for this video, for example. I can just show different things, my YouTube strategy, my blog strategy, or you can use slides like I'm using in this presentation. And then you create that content. Basically, you add it into this content calendar and you have your dates, you shoot it, you publish it, you have your video editor do it. We have a tool called Frame that we use now so we can you know, get the videos edited, get it in here, and then you can start viewing your own videos and making comments. So sometimes I add comments here on the right if something's out of date or not you know, worded correctly, then the video editor can go back in and edit it. So really, creating content you know, today for me is really about 
becoming a manager of all of this. So you're kind of overseeing the whole process now where I'm doing keyword research and I'm sending it to a writer. I'm doing video ideation and coming up with videos. I'm shooting it and then sending it to an editor. And I'm getting ahead of it so that I want to be like two to three to four weeks ahead of my YouTube schedule so that I'm not like, you know, editing a video or editing a video and publishing it the same week. Same thing with the blog. I want to be like a month or two ahead of the content that I'm going to create. So in my blogging course, I show exactly like how to, here's the templates for the exact posts you need. Here's exactly what to do in Surfer, click by click, step by step, and you know, how to train people to do that. Because really, if you're getting content back that's not good, it's because you haven't gotten someone good enough, you haven't trained them good enough. So that's what it looked like back, um, you know, today. That's what it looks like today. But when I first started, really all I was doing was I was publishing one article a week myself. You know, it wasn't anything fancy. I didn't know what I was doing. I did nothing on YouTube for the first basically three years of my blog. I had a blog, but I didn't have a YouTube channel. But basically all I did was I learned and I grew my skill set over time. So that's all it was. Like, it's just the more that I did it, the better I got at it. So I was horrible at YouTube videos when I first started. I actually did all of the, a lot of the course content before I did YouTube. And then I've been doing more course content, more YouTube. And the more reps you get, the more blog posts you publish, the more videos you make, the better you get at it. But looking back how I started, Basically, it wasn't anything that impressive. But what you really need to do is elevate yourself to owner. So what that means is you need to, when you're creating content and you really want to scale this and become successful and a, and a real force in your niche, well, you start out doing everything yourself and learning and adapting and writing every article and you know shooting every video and doing everything and doing some editing and doing all the, the mundane tasks that you don't necessarily want to do, but you have to do to become good enough at it to delegate it. So now, then you need to find a way to elevate yourself to owner. So that means, yes, you can still do the keyword research. You want to do the strategy of what you're going to create. Yes, you want to come up with video ideas yourself and shoot them yourself, your face on camera, but you don't want to do all the video editing. You don't want to do all the writing. You need to create processes for these things. And we can learn that and we can adapt to that over time. So let's talk about your strategy. Let's say you're just starting a new blog or you have a blog and you, you, know, you have some posts on there, but you really want to hone in on making money with your blog, creating content that makes money, you know, transactional posts that make affiliate revenue, informational posts that build your audience. So how do we actually start from zero? What would you do? Well, first we have to talk about the authority flywheel. So this is something that I created and it's in my course blog growth engine. And it's an exercise that we go through to find your actual niche in your areas that you want to blog about and write about. So when you think about like my stuff today, I blog about software, I blog about finance, I blog about how to make money online, but I'm kind of the go-to person for blogging and for making money online on YouTube and on, on Google. We're basically to start the YouTube channel three months ago. So that's growing in that area. But the authority flywheel is something that you can use to really identify your niche. So when we think about niche advice today, I, I want to really avoid the idea of these small niche sites and creating a tiny niche site making a few hundred dollars a month, because that's not how things work anymore. We need to build a real brand. And we want to do this, you know, in the background of our life and create something sustainable that we're not going to quit. So that's why I created the authority flywheel, because it mixes the key, the four key pillars to find your niche. And, you know, you can't choose here, you know, the truth is you can't choose the perfect niche at the beginning. You can't choose like one specific micro niche thing and then make it successful. When you're just starting out, you are your niche. So if you have a website and you picture the homepage and your face is on it, what is it that you want to talk about? So that comes to you, your identity. That's your unique identity. Only you have your own identity. You're a unique individual. What do you want to share with the world? What message do you want to share? Then you have your expertise. So that can be professional experience, personal experience. You don't have to be an extreme expert in anything, but it's something that you have a little bit of knowledge in. So you start brainstorming that. Then we talk about the market. So what can we, we dive into what types of affiliate opportunities are there? What kind of keyword research opportunities are there? How many people are searching for the things that you want to write about? And then we think about leverage. Do you have any preferred professional or personal leverage in your life that can help you grow faster. So everyone has different starting lines when they're creating brands for themselves online. So when we combine all of these things, we create a niche for your site. Now, when we think about what do we start blogging about? Well, how do I choose the perfect niche? What do I blog about? How do I create a content plan? Well, this is what I recommend because we can't really choose the perfect tiny niche at the beginning. We based the brand on you. We create a personal brand website like I did at adamandfroy.com. You could use your name. You can use domains don't matter. You just don't want to pigeonhole yourself in one area. But what we want to do is start with a broad, large niche that you choose and identify and then test multiple sub niches within that. So if you want to do a fitness website, what do you start blogging about? Well, let's just say you want to start with fitness and it's, you know, we don't need to discover the sub tiny niche that you're going to create yet. You have your face on the website. You want to do fitness content. So what are we going to do? Well, 
we have to discover first what kind of posts we're going to create. So we want to add 20 posts into your content calendar based on keyword research. So that's at least getting ourselves ahead of the curve. And we're going to do 70% transactional, 30% informational. And we'll go over exactly what that means. And then we'll find the informational content type in your niche. We'll publish as aggressively as we can. We wait for the data on what works. And then we pivot and adapt our content based on what's actually working. And then over time, we outsource and keep improving the process. So. First, we need to get some content into our content calendar and come up with ideas. So if we're in the fitness niche, we don't want to just talk about one tiny area of fitness because we don't know if Google's going to let it work or not. We don't know what's going to happen. So within fitness, we need to think, okay, what can we talk about? Well, we could talk about fitness equipment. We could do affiliate marketing on the best types of equipment. We could also talk about the best types of like supplements and protein powder and food and that kind of stuff. And then the informational type of content in fitness is about probably workouts and regimens and routines and stuff like that. Uh, let's try to find some keyword ideas. So for fitness, Let's try to create some post ideas. So how do we start doing this? How do we create content that makes money? First, let's look for transactional ideas. And I'm gonna search for something like best machine because I know there's like ab machines, leg machines, press machines. So I'm gonna to go to the Hrefs, which is a tool that I always recommend for SEO. If you wanna do keyword research quickly, you just use Hrefs. Um, to do it. We can use the matching terms tool to find things that match best and machine. So there's best espresso machine, washing machine, sewing machine. Obviously this is not all fitness, but what about if I put in like best leg machine. So we're gonna come up with like a transactional affiliate post to make money and review products. That's what blogs are. Blogs are mediators of purchase decisions, informational you know, and transactional posts. So there's best leg press machine, best leg compression machine, massager extension. Let's try that. Let's just try leg extension machine. And then we'll go to the overview and see what that looks like. So keyword difficulty is 24, it's not that bad. 18,000, pretty high volume leg extension machine. And then we can go down and see who's currently ranking for it. And this is a good keyword because we can look at the authority of these sites and see that we actually stand a chance because a couple low authority sites are ranking for it. So when you're doing keyword research in your initial content plan, the key is to find sites that are ranking on page one that have low domain authority. So look at this one, fitnessfactory.com has a domain rating of 35. This is a number out of 100 based on authority. So the lower authority sites uh, could be passed. We also see number 10 here is Strength Warehouse USA with just a domain rating of 19. So not very authoritative. We could beat them with some links. And Cheat, by, cheat Day Design, uh, domain rating of 42. So yes, we see sites like Amazon in here and looks like Sports Illustrated and Walmart and very well fit, but we see that there are four sites with lower domain ratings in here that we could actually beat. So this would be a keyword I would add into my content calendar, best leg extension machine. And that can be you know, one category of posts on your fitness site, product reviews, list posts based on specific things. And these products are probably quite expensive. So after that, let's try another one in the fitness uh, space and we're gonna do best protein. So let's try protein and see like, so we can talk about protein powder, we can talk about supplements and all these things. Let's go to matching terms again. You can do this in any niche to find these opportunities. But we see there's a keyword difficulty score. So a difficulty score is how hard is it to rank for that based on the authority of the ranking sites and all of those things. So let's say we wanna find a maximum of 25 difficulty. So this gives us things that are actually somewhat easier. So here we have one, keyword difficulty 12. The highest volume is this best tasting protein bars right here. So let's look that one up. So the keyword difficulty 12, okay, that's not bad at all. The volume's good at 5.1K, best tasting protein bars. We'll let the, you know, the search engine results load, but I can see sites like Good Housekeeping's in there. Okay, so that's an authority site. Uh, Aloha.com, FitCrunch, Protein Bar Mix, Built.com. So this could potentially be a good one. Best tasting protein bars. So that's another category of posts in your fitness site. We've covered machines. Now we've covered actual, you know, food. There's an endless amount of different types of protein things that you can write about. Best casein protein, best protein powder for weight gain. Look at all these low difficulty keywords that you can rank for. Best low carb protein powder, premier protein flavor. So maybe you add three to five just in the protein category to get going and start ranking some content in, in related to food. Now, what is the informational content in your niche? So we have to think about that as well. For fitness, it's probably related to workouts. So every single niche has a different type of informational content. Like for example, a golf blog could be how to golf, how to chip, how to putt, how to swing. Um, a kitchen blog or a home blog could be about ideas, living room ideas posts, uh, kitchen ideas, kitchen design and decor ideas. Camping, which we'll cover next, could be checklists and essentials, camping checklists, how to pack a backpack, things like that. For fitness, the informational content for a blog is typically around workouts. So I'm gonna do, put in the word workout and try to find matching terms for that. So we've got 
tricep workout, full body workout, Murph workout. We see a range of difficulty scores. So let's go to uh, max 25 again, and we'll do that and we'll see easier opportunities. So there's a lot of random stuff in here, but then we have dumbbell leg workout, at home chest workout, chest workout with dumbbells, hip thrust workout, back and shoulder workout. Let's try that one, back and shoulder workout. And then let's try just for the heck of it, chest and tricep workout. So we'll try both of those. Look at these opportunities. So back and shoulder workout, low difficulty, high volume. First page, a little bit more difficult. Let's try the other one. Um, chest and tricep workout. Lower difficulty, 12. High volume, 20,000. And this one's actually better because we have some lower domain rating sites. Look at that. Number one ranking is strengthlog.com, lower authority at 38. And then we've got other ones down here at 42, 56, 62. So that's a good one to add in. So you can start adding these into your content calendar like this. So this is an example in the kitchen niche. So we have a number of different keywords we've done based on the search volume, difficulty, and the type of post that it is. But you just start adding in these target keywords into your content calendar. So this could be for a kitchen blog. So we have outdoor kitchen ideas that has 98,000 searches and is lower difficulty and isn't a good idea post. So then we can title it like something like 27 best outdoor kitchen ideas. And we have our published date. So then we can add when do we want to publish it by. Then there's other ones we added here. Best kitchen utensil set, best, best touchless kitchen faucet, best small air fryer, how to accessorize a kitchen counter. So we can see a mixture of transactional, informational, and ideas posts in your niche. And these all work in tandem. So really, it's just coming down to creating your first 20 articles, getting it down to here, and getting ahead of it, and using a mixture of finding these opportunities based on keyword research, and then adding them into your content calendar, and publishing them as aggressively as you can. And as we get back to it, we want to publish aggressively and then wait for the data. So we don't want to go off, you know, you see that we're going after, you know, different types of things within fitness, different types of things within kitchen, you know, there's different, you know, we don't want to have a tiny niche site, we want to live in the middle, find these opportunities. So let's say you're in that fitness site, and then all of a sudden, all the protein powder things start ranking, then Google sees that you're getting traffic for protein powder, then you have more knowledge graph in that area, you build a few links there, you're becoming an authority in that small area, then you can start, you know, pivoting and adapting your content calendar to that. Because this is thinking like a scientist. This is not just publishing randomly updates about our life. A content calendar is based on algorithms and based on what people want to see and what Google thinks you're an expert in. So if you start getting, let's say you start ranking for the workouts, then you can start pushing more content that way. So we're about 20 articles ahead and we wanna, you know, but we wanna be able to adapt and pivot. I always do that. So as you can see, even in, you know, my content calendar, we have like things around digital marketing agencies, SMS marketing, but then, you know, we added more about contact management and sales management because we started ranking for CRMs and Salesforce stuff. So we're kind of adapting as we go. So you always wanna adapt your content calendar, but you really wanna go like 70% transactional list posts, 30% informational posts in your niche. And then you just wanna publish aggressively, pivot and adapt based on what's actually working. So. To recap, you want to, you know, start with a broad niche like fitness or tech or camping or kitchen or, you know, home lifestyle. And then you start finding these transactional, you know, posts that you can make money on in different subcategories within that niche, test those, tweak them, and then work based on, you know, pivot based on what's working. And then you just want to outsource and continue to improve your processes. So again, I started by writing one article per week by myself, not doing the best keyword research, writing about random stuff. And then over time, I learned and adapted. Today, I have a content manager, I have other writers, we publish aggressively, we try to publish quickly, but that adapts and evolves over time. Basically, when you start with no leverage and you start a content plan with zero, you're starting with nothing, you're writing everything yourself, and you don't have money or funds for writers. So you do it all yourself until you start making some money, trickle that, hire your first writers, and then it's just a growth curve. So when you see these big, massive sites, Tech Radar, CNET, um, Tom's Guide, they have a team of writers now. So they're publishing, you know, maybe 20 articles a day for all I know. But you can't do that when you're just starting out. But the idea is to keep growing, keep growing, keep investing in your content, keep pushing the envelope, and then eventually you can hire people and you can keep doing that. And then you get to the point where, yeah, I can, you could afford to hire five or 10 writers. And then you just start, you know, distancing yourself from the competition because you're publishing so much content at scale. So that's how I created my seven figure content plan. And that's how you can get started. But if you want more details, if you want to know exactly how to do the keyword research, exactly how to lay out the post, the templates for everything, make sure to watch my free blogging masterclass. You know, you can sign up for that. It's about a 90 minute training. Um, go through it. Lots of students have had aha moments uh, going through that. 
uh, training. And let me know what you think. You know, do you have a content plan in place today? Are you doing keyword research for every single piece of content? Do you have a YouTube channel? What does your content schedule look like? I'd love to know in the comments. Please like the video. Hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.